Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to Philo Notes. And、uh, before I get started with today's topic, I would like to thank you for visiting us today for another edition of our daily whiteboard. This video is the start of a series of editions on symbolic logic. As we know, the topic on symbolic logic and philosophy is very broad and complex, and so. My discussion around this topic is fragmented into specific sections. This way, it would be easier for us to understand the nature and dynamics of symbolic logic. All right. Without further ado, let's get started with our first section. This is all about the propositions and symbols used in symbolic logic. So, just as in traditional or Aristotelian logic. Our main goal in symbolic logic is to determine the validity of arguments. But because arguments are composed of propositions, and because we need to symbolize the argument first, using a specific rule before we can determine its validity, we need therefore to discuss the types of proposition and symbols used in symbolic logic. Please note that symbolic logic uses only declarative statements or propositions. Because any other types of proposition are not truth functional, that is, they cannot be either true or false. For example, the interrogative proposition "What is your name?" is not truth functional because we cannot assign any truth value to it, that is, it cannot be either true or false. In similar manner, the exclamatory proposition. What an exciting journey! Cannot be used in symbolic logic because again we cannot assign a truth value to it. Hence again, we can only employ declarative propositions in symbolic logic because they are the only types of proposition that can either be true or false. Think, for example, of the proposition Donald Trump is a racist president. Depending on the context, we may say. Yes, it is true that Donald Trump is a racist president, or we may say it is false that Donald Trump is a racist president. There are two types of declarative proposition used in symbolic logic, namely simple and compound proposition. On the one hand, a simple proposition is one that is composed of only one proposition. For example. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. As we can see, this proposition has only one component. On the other hand, a compound proposition is composed of two or more propositions, such as Jack is singing while Jill is dancing, and if the road is wet, then either it rains today or the fire truck spills water on the road. As you notice, the first example is made up of two propositions, namely, Jack is singing and Jill is dancing. The second example, on the other hand, is composed of three propositions, namely, the road is wet, it rains today, the fire truck spills water on the road. All right, so that's about propositions. Now let's proceed to the symbols used in symbolic logic. Logicians use the lower case of the English alphabet, P through Z, to symbolize propositions. They are called variables. The upper case A through Z are called constants. For example. If we let P stand for the proposition Jack is singing, then it is symbolized as P. Thus, instead of saying Jack is singing, we just say P. One of the symbols used in symbolic logic is dot, which is read as and. This is used to symbolize the connective of a conjunctive proposition. As I will discuss in the succeeding edition, a conjunctive proposition is connected by the word "and." Let's take, for example, the proposition 
Jack is singing and Jill is dancing. If we let P stand for Jack is singing and Q for Jill is dancing, then the proposition Jack is singing and Jill is dancing is symbolized as follows. P and Q. Then we have the symbol wedge, which is read as either or or just or. This is used to symbolize the connective of a disjunctive proposition. And as I will discuss in the succeeding edition, disjunctive propositions are connected by the words either or or simply or. So that if we let P stand for Jack is singing and Q for Jill is dancing, then the proposition either Jack is singing or Jill is dancing is symbolized as follows. P or Q. Please note that the proposition above is an inclusive disjunction. There is another way to symbolize an exclusive disjunction, but I will discuss this other type of disjunctive proposition when I go to the four types of compound propositions. The symbol horseshoe, which is read as if, then, or just then, is used to symbolize the connective of a conditional proposition. As I will discuss in the succeeding edition, conditional propositions are connected by the words if then or just then. Now if we let P stand for Jack is singing and Q for Jill is dancing, then the proposition if Jack is singing then Jill is dancing is symbolized as follows. If P then Q. The symbol triple bar, which is read as if and only if, is used to symbolize the connective of a biconditional proposition. As I will discuss in the succeeding edition, biconditional propositions are connected by the words if and only if. And if we let P stand for Jack is singing and Q for Jill is dancing, then the proposition Jack is singing if and only if Jill is dancing is symbolized as follows. P if and only if Q. The symbol forward slash and triple dots is read as therefore. This symbol is used to separate the premises and the conclusion in an argument. For example, if the premises in the argument are P, then Q, P, and the conclusion is Q, then the argument is symbolized as follows. P, then Q, P, therefore, Q. Lastly, we have the symbol tilde, which is read as not. This is used to negate proposition. As I will show you later, any proposition can be negated. Thus, the proposition Jack is not singing is symbolized as follows. Not P. Now, here is a summary of some of the basic symbols used in symbolic logic. The lowercase p through z are called variables. The uppercase a through z are called constants. Dot is read as and. Wedge is read as either or or just or. Horseshoe is read as if then or just then. Triple bar is read as if and only if. Forward slash and triple dots is read as therefore and tilde is read as not.
All right, that's it for today. Keep looking forward to our series of daily whiteboard editions as we try to make the learning and understanding of philosophy incredibly easy. Thanks for joining us today in this edition of our daily whiteboard here at Philo Notes. I hope you find this material helpful, and if you do, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Take care.